COVID has been a driver and an, an accelerator of uh, digitization. We have seen uh, uh, over the last two years uh, uh, how important digital uh, communication has become in the insurance sector. But the fact that people couldn't be face to face meant that people needed to have tools and technologies that allowed them to develop a common view of risk when they weren't all in the same room. So as they're having access to solutions that could allow them to assess risk and share their views on it before they bound that risk was yeah, an incredibly important addition to uh, the tools that they already had in place. The insurance landscape was not fit for purpose pre-COVID and probably isn't fit for purpose yet post-COVID. The customer owns the data. So whatever happens, it's not the companies owning it, it's really the customer. This is very important also for trust and to make people really feel, feel safe and uh, confident, right, in when sharing data. If you look at you know, a lot of statistics, um, you will see that uh, insurance companies are really meeting customers' need, paying out 99% of claims uh, and, and so forth. So a really big positive because that's what they are there for to support people in the event of something really horrible going wrong. The expectations of the users um, have changed in terms of times. Uh, today you can order in 10 minutes uh, something and that will like some groceries and they will be delivered to your door. So I don't think in a customer's mind it makes sense to wait for like five days to receive a letter from their insurance companies telling them that the beneficiary they asked to be added to their contract has successfully been added. We have some ways to go in terms of making a product easier to use and something that people consider to be a, a beneficial rather than a grudge purchase. I still feel there's a gap between what customers see they're covered for and what insurance companies legally see they're covered for. The way that people purchase insurance isn't flexible enough at the moment. Uh, the claims process is generally clunky and not customer centric. And I think we aren't spending enough time designing the products around the consumer. I think we're still trapped in designing policies that are based fundamentally in an underwriting philosophy as opposed to products that consumers might actually wish to engage with. The level of mistrust is still there, particularly given what's come out of the recent pandemic, you know, with business interruption claims, it was all over in the press. It does make customers feel like if I'm buying an insurance product, there is a big risk that uh, I will still not get my claims paid at some point due to some small, uh, uh, you know, fine, fine print text. What is important is really uh, revolutionize the customer experience end to end of the whole value chain to create this trust and to make sure this mistrust disappears. Either they pay for that coverage or they don't, but we shouldn't be hiding that from them upfront or when they're filing a claim. Big tech is raising the bar for all of us. Probably the gap in the insurance industry is a little bit larger uh, than in other industries. What do the big tech companies uh, give you? You know, take Amazon, you click a button and within hours or uh, you can deliver your product uh, in order to buy insurance. Uh, unfortunately, today you have to provide lots and lots of information uh, you know, about yourself, about what you do with your lifestyle, depending on what you are. And then you get a quote and then a policy document, which is 30, 40 pages long. Uh, so there needs to be some kind of change to, to move to that landscape. I believe that technology companies can play a part in, in delivering that. And there's some important lessons to learn for how easy to buy and how easy to do business with uh, these large on, online technology companies have made us. Uh, expect that the world should be. I've seen a lot more talk around embedded insurance propositions and if that starts to happen and we're not quick enough to respond to it then I think we're going to find ourselves outside of the the tent looking in. On the personalization side I think it is key to replace the offline interactions that people used to have. So you used to go to your insurance company, you used to meet your broker or someone else. Um, so we need to replace that with uh, personalization uh, online. But for me, 
automation is actually even more important. Why? Because the more you automate the claims management, the more the what was not automated before was tasks that didn't really require a human to, to handle them. It, they were not adding any value to the claims management management process. And so if you remove that unusable part from the management process by automating it, then the time that you have to dedicate to a user, to listen to them, to be more empathetic to them, then is what you get. I think automation is the way forward, definitely. I think customers are demanding faster, more automated journeys. Automation around the claims process, I think, has got a long way to go. I think we're getting there with the front end uh, a lot more. Personalization, uh, on one hand, it's a, a great tool. On the other hand, there's also a risk that if you personalize too much, uh, you make certain people or certain businesses uninsurable. making sure you get the most out of the debt data, which is the asset the customer has given to you, uh, is going to be super critical in the next uh, six, 12 months. Uh, it also defines the winners and losers in the, in the industry. So uh, it's super important. And it's, remember, it's a trust-based asset that customers have given us. So we've got to use that data responsibly and then give something back that customers will value. You know, it could be a great product or a great price. With minimal key and minimal effort, uh, you can get to a very, very you know, uh, hyper-customized uh, price for that risk. And I think that it's that use of customer data that, 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 um, that the customers themselves are, are very happy to see their data being used in that way. It's, you know, it's, a, it's almost like a social contract. I'm happy for you to use my data as long as it's to my advantage. Bringing together the old world and the new world delivering on new customer expectations that also came up not only during the pandemic, but also during all the digitization that happened over the last years, right, um, is actually something that blocks us from really going probably as fast as other industries. I think legacy mindsets are an issue that we, we don't talk about enough. I think that the challenge you have is you've got a, a sector that is based on, on managing risk which makes people probably a bit more risk averse. How do you quickly keep moving your platform uh, and what you do uh, you know, in a smarter way forwards? And that challenge becomes harder when you've got a big legacy uh, behind you. So the challenge will be how we kind of start getting our tech teams or IT teams responding to a modern world where things are moving much faster, uh, much quicker than before, but then ensuring that the legacy moves forward at the same time. There's legacy process, uh, there's old technology that's not fit for purpose and there's poor use of the data. And those three factors uh, we see sort of, sort of are, are trapping costs within an organisation. In the long term, I believe that the traditional insurers will, uh, that they've, got, they've got two two or three choices. They can, they can either stay as they are and hope they survive, or they, 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 may, they may not. Um, they can transition and become more innovative and agile themselves and adopt more technology or most likely the incumbents will start to buy uh, the insure techs. I'm seeing two forms of uh, kind of play. One is where uh, traditional insurers are looking to provide capacity to insure techs because they are looking for customers uh, in a new way they're using new technology. Alternatively there will be places where traditional insurers may actually uh, buy out an insure tech or an insurance uh, uh, tech business that has just kicked off. Uh, both models are still evolving, I would say, but you can see the landscape is, is gradually moving to you know, a hybrid model where you've got traditional insurers, insure techs, uh, they're both playing in the same space. And in some instances, uh, they're either merging, buying each other out, or actually providing capacity uh, to each other. In the future, there will be two types of insurer. There'll be those that you know, have AI and machine learning and data at their heart, so like a modern insure tech, and then there'll be those that used to exist. I think insurance, to be very honest, is probably one of those industries that that haven't that are at the forefront 
of digital transformation. And reasons are things we just discussed, uh, like regulation and, 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 and very complex IT systems. But um, it totally excites me to see um, the potential that, that uh, this, this journey will bring. The insurance space is very exciting. Uh, why? Because it hasn't changed that much. So there's a, that means there's opportunities. Uh, if you look at fintech, I think for the past five to 10 years, like a lot has changed. You've seen like very new actors that have completely shifted the way people think about their bank, but we're not there yet with insurance at all. How quickly do you start solving a problem 10 years down the line? And do you even know what uh, the world will be like 10 years now from now? So uh, those are the challenges. In one hand are challenges, but also excitement because uh, there could be many, many possibilities and how we respond uh, as an insurance industry will define winners and losers. I think if we can uh, make insurance more relevant to people, uh, make it easy to buy as a product, make it easy to use, yeah, you know, fulfill our fulfill not only the contractual obligations, but like that social contract that says, we're here for you when we need you, uh, then I think that this industry is absolutely going to thrive. I think the concept of insurance that a group of us get together and all put in just in case one of us is vulnerable is a really, really powerful concept. But I don't think we convey that concept to the consumers anywhere near it enough. You know, we, the insurance is seen as a grudge purchase. It's not seen as a way of bringing groups of people together. And I think... What's exciting for the future is if we can get the technology right and we can start to communicate effectively, we've got, you know, a multi, multi billion pound industry that has a huge amount of growth available to it in terms of how it talks to consumers, the products it designs for them and, you know, the opportunities for the future. Yeah.